Good morning. Let me welcome everybody here. Uh, we're gathered with some family during this unusual time with the uh, the virus. And um, so we're meeting with just a small group today, but we want to welcome everybody and those who are watching on Facebook as well. And of course, the reason we're here today is that we're celebrating the life of Mr. Bill Purdy. And uh, we want to honor him today. We know that that uh, Bill, um, he, st he was born um, in 1943 on April 5th, and he stepped into the heavenly presence of the Lord Jesus Christ on March 15th, 2020. And uh, we're so thankful that we today can call on the name of the Lord, that we uh, can go before the throne of grace to find grace and mercy to help in time of need. And we're going to do that in just a moment. We'll have prayer. Um, we're going to watch, we've already watched some slides. Are we going to do watch those again or have we, or, okay. So we've watched some slides today and Angela Fleur's here. She's going to sing some favorite uh, hymns for us. I'll fly away and it is well. And then good friend Ken Jordan is going to come and share some of his thoughts and memories and celebrate Bill's life. Of course, there's some folks here uh, that are friends and family and also from the 9-11 Bible Fellowship class that Pastor Rob Taylor is a teacher of. And uh, then we'll have a few more songs by Angela and we'll look into the Word of God for encouragement and some more memories. And, and then we're going to have some family introductions uh, that will be here for the folks that are on Facebook. So uh, why don't we bow our heads to pray. And as we bow our heads, I just want to say the Bible says, Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. His love endures forever. And we're so thankful that we can uh, walk in the love of God. And you know what? I think I... Had, had you bow your heads just a minute too soon. So let me let me come back because I just want to mention some of the family members. Of course, Bill's wife is Ann Purdy, and uh, his brother is Jason, and sister is Lisa. And then uh, son, Joe Castile, and daughters, Joanne Castile, Brittany Adabati, and uh, Dawn Watkins. And then grandson, Nicholas Watkins, and Allie Watkins is a granddaughter. Kelly Jo Purdy, a daughter, David Fry, a son, Maria Fry, a granddaughter, Christopher Purdy is here, uh, he's a son, and Kylie uh, Purdy is a granddaughter, and Damon Purdy is a grandson, and Ayrton, did I say that right? And uh, then some of uh, the, the, the wives and husbands of these folks also, so we just want to mention each of them and celebrate their relationship to Bill as well and just express God's love for, for each of you. So let's bow our heads and we'll pray. Heavenly Father, we give you our praise and worship. And Lord, we thank you that we can love you because you first loved us. And Lord, we don't we know that you don't love us because of what we do or don't do or what anyone's done to us. But you love us because that's who you are. The scripture says God is love. And Lord, we know that you demonstrated your love when Jesus died for us. The Bible says that you demonstrated your love for us in this, that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. So thank you for the salvation. Thank you for your resurrection. We'll see today that meant so much to Bill, and he defended adamantly. And Lord Jesus, it impacted his life and the lives of those in this room and in the audience on Facebook. And so, Lord Jesus, we give you praise. We thank you for the comfort of the Holy Spirit. And Lord, we ask that you'll minister to each person who's grieving now. They're celebrating Bill's heavenly home going, but also saying goodbye. And that can be a little sad in the moment. And so, Lord, bless this family. And as they adjust, we thank you for Bill. Thank you for all that he touched and all that he blessed. And Lord Jesus, we are glad that we can meet together. We pray for the Holy Spirit's encouragement. We thank you for the truth of the word that Bill loves and love so much while he was here and we call on your name to minister in jesus name amen
You know, when you meet someone, <clears throat> they change your life for good or bad. Bill changed my life for good. Uh, he not only talked about his faith, but he just simply lived it. Think about that. We met 20 years ago, and we did many things together, many things. We worked together in our spiritual walk. I remember taking him to, on a mission trip to Jamaica, and I thought he was going to kill himself playing with the kids. He's had such a good time. But it was in the personal side that Bill will live on in my heart. He helped me many times in my soul winning clinics. He would do whatever I asked him. He'd pass out papers. But most important, I got him to give a personal testimony, and it was always a good one. He always shared. Anything that was up that I wanted to do, he was always there, especially on the spiritual side. Just a few weeks ago, we worked at the Wordless Book Tent at the State Fair. I sat beside Bill and watched him tell people about Jesus. He was so excited. And that's what he wants us to do, too. So as I remember, Bill, I want to remember those times. I can't look around anywhere in my life or at home unless I see Bill. I see his love and touch. And he always supported me in all things. He was always there. Always reminded me, <clears throat> stay humble and keep trusting the Lord. He always put others first in his life. Many, many can say the same thing about Bill as I just said. Many of you here, many watch it online because he was a good example of what Christ instructed us to do and that's to love one another. He did. He loved everyone. He never changed. He was steadfast until the end. He kept the faith. He modeled for others what Christ wants us to do and be is to love one another and tell people about Jesus. He did that. Like I said, God used Bill to change my life and many others. I know I'm on the highway to heaven and I can almost hear Bill say, stay the course, stay humble. And he always closed with, I love you. Always. I love you too, Bill. Thanks for the memories. Till we meet again.
Bill is home right now. I know we're standing in Bill's wonderful, beautiful, physical home, and I know Ann's had a lot to do with that. Uh, but Bill, even than this, is in a better home. This is his physical, natural home, but he's in his supernatural, spiritual home, and that's defined, really, by being in the presence of Jesus. And I'm so thankful that Bill knew Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior. And we know that because of the testimony of what the Word of God says and also the testimony of uh, his life, uh, of, of salvation in Christ Jesus. And in a way, this is my favorite kind of funeral to preach. And you might say you can have a favorite funeral. That sounds odd to some people. God's grace extends in so many directions, and it, it, God can save people in all different stations of life, and there are all kinds of wonderful life stories and of what God has done, and uh, God uh, never ceases to be able to work in us. But when I, what I mean when I say that uh, it might be my favorite type of service is this, that I love to preach a funeral service when the person's life preached the scriptures. And uh, on the back of this program, if you guys don't mind keeping that handy, we'll get to it in a minute. It has three of Bill's favorite scriptures that he either was memorizing or had memorized and that were very important to him. And as I listened to stories of his life this week with Ann and Chris and Tiffany, and I wish I could have been with more family, but that's how it worked out on this occasion. And I know other family love him too and, and those that couldn't be here. But uh, they shared some stories, and it became obvious to me. And I, and I know Bill as well, but as I listened to more stories, I wished I knew him even better. You know, I just It just uh, was great. But I want to speak about Bill. One word I asked for, a phrase, and I got several from the family that that describe him, the first thing that was said was that he was generous in all things, uh, in his time, in his beliefs. He was reliable. He kept his word. He was a man of strength. You could trust him. He was flexible, and he demonstrated unconditional love, and those are great things to define somebody. Bill was born, we already mentioned, in 1943, Birmingham, Michigan, so he's a long way from his starting place, but uh, he's enjoyed a home for a a while here down in Florida. His career was that he worked for General Motors, and I hope I can say it right. He was the district manager of the truck division in the Southeast Division, and he worked in the area of medium and heavy-duty trucks. Did I get it all in there? And uh, the reason I want to get it right is because I understand that he said that a lot of times and made sure that people understood that. He was in fleet sales. Sometime he would sell 300 uh, trucks at the same time to companies like Coke or Disney. What were some of the others? I didn't get them all, but any other? General Electric, some of the big companies, and uh, kind of step trucks. So, uh, And he was a GM man. Chris, uh, his son, shared that one time he uh, bought a Jeep, and, um, and they, he had a conversation with his dad because to his dad that was like buying a car from another country. So... <laughs> So uh, they had a discussion, and, and Bill shared his feelings about buying something that was not a General Motors. Uh, Bill trusted Jesus in his 30s. His first wife, Patricia, who's now uh, in the Lord's presence, um, she uh, led him to the Word of God, and eventually he came to know Christ, and I think that shaped this portion of his life. Uh, some of his hobbies, he loved fishing, but especially he loved repairing things. I understand he was a handyman. He, to say he could fix anything might be an understatement. Uh, He started out helping widows, and he loved to tinker with things, and eventually he began to help more and more people, especially around the church that needed help, and it became a little bit of a business, and then it got bigger, and then he hired other people, and uh, he actually had a huge amount of customers, so he could fix a lot of things and loved to do it. Uh, He liked to travel most recently. The last time I got to be with Bill was in the hospital a few weeks ago. He had been back, and uh, he and Ann had been to Panama and had a wonderful trip there, and he was a little sick when he came back. And so, uh, But they had other places that they liked to go, the Mexican Riviera, Destin, Gatlinburg, uh, I'm jealous of this one, the Viking cruise to Europe. That, I, I lived in Germany. So uh, Alaska cruise with Charles Stanley, which was as much spiritual as it was beautiful and fun, and they also caught a salmon. Whose fish was bigger, yours or? Uh, okay, so Ann caught, Ann, <laughs> Ann caught the bigger fish. And, so, and then uh, Ann shared, and this is just kind of fun, one thing 
there's only one thing on their bucket list they didn't get to do, and that was travel through the Rockies on a train and into Canada. But maybe in the new heaven and earth, you know, maybe that'll be a maybe that'll be an option. And uh, he was a great record record keeper. When he went on these trips to Gatlinburg and other places, he always knew exactly what there was to do. He'd make a list: things to do in Gatlinburg or things to do in Destin. And he kept meticulous receipts and detail and knew everything and a file about every trip. And uh, years later, if you asked him, he could pull it out and had everything right there in one file. And so uh, also Bill loved his family. He loved traveling to see his kids. He loved for his grandkids. They'd come down and visit with him sometimes. He loved family reunions. He kept up with his siblings. He also kept up with college and high school friends. And uh, for years, what's it, 40, 50 years that 55 years of high school uh, that he kept up with his folks and was very faithful to them. His favorite Easter, uh, holiday was Easter. He loved the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. That was so important to him. He used to help, and when he was at Village Presbyterian Church, he often helped with the sunrise service and made sure that was an, a success. And he's right, the resurrection. Do you know if you believe the resurrection, the rest of the Bible's a piece of cake? It's not hard to believe the Bible if you can believe. And, you know, I'm going to back that up. What I really meant, to, that's, that's partially true. You can go that, a step back because he also loved Genesis. If you can believe that God created everything, you can believe the entire Bible. Even the resurrection's easy if you believe in that. And uh, so I do want to let his life preach a little bit. One of his favorite verses on the back is 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17. And this is so important because he was committed to the inspiration, the inerrancy, and the infallibility of the Scriptures. The Word of God is God-breathed. It has no errors as God gave it to people uh, to write down and, uh, and for us by the Holy Spirit. And so 2 Timothy 3.16, you all can look with me on your, your program. All Scripture is breathed by God. Same word as inspiration. And profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness. When the scripture says something is profitable, that's a good verse for us to memorize and to know, isn't it? And uh, it says that the man of God may be complete, equipped for every good work. What a powerful verse. And it starts with the word of God. I just threw this in. I just have a hunch he liked this too, because that passage, 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17, is one of the two most important scriptures in the Bible that talk about the inerrancy and especially the inspiration of the Word of God. I'm going to just share this one. The other one is 2 Peter 1.21, For prophecy never had its origin in the will of man, but men spoke from God as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. I figured I might as well throw that in too because I know he loved it if he loved the first one. He liked Ken Ham. He liked Answers in Genesis because uh, they defended the creation. The creation is one of the most attacked passages in the Bible for that very reason because if you believe the creation the rest is easy and and as we think of the creation another one of his favorite verses on your program Genesis 131 and God saw everything that he had made and behold it was very good and there was evening and there was morning the sixth day you don't know it, but that is a loaded verse it answers a lot of questions and could solve a lot of controversy and uh, it's a great verse for us to think about and so uh, some of his ministries that he was involved in, he taught fourth and fifth graders in Sunday school or Bible fellowship for many years. Um, he also ministered in Haiti. As we were watching the slides, I saw uh, a, a, a church that he and Ann were at and also the Coons who are here today uh, that I was at also that same year. So that's pretty exciting. I'm sure that was a great trip. He drove uh, the whole orchestra. Now, I was on this trip to the orchestra, went to... Uh, now I have to think for a minute, to Cuba, and uh, Bill volunteered. He drove us all the way down to Miami, and I had a great time being with him and just getting to talk, and he's just a wonderful guy. He was also involved in the disaster relief ministry uh, with the, the Baptist men and, and also the Home Mission Board, now the North American Mission Board, and the Florida Baptist. And he liked anything transportation. And we'll see that in a second. But he also was a member of uh, Promise Keepers and was part of that ministry, Trace Diaz, and uh, so many other things. But Bill was a servant, and he ministered. He served others, even as he served his Lord. I like this. Uh, the family shared with me that he liked to tease the kids. He would tell them 
I was born in 1492. And you all know the little phrase in 1492, Columbus sailed the ocean blue, right? But he told him, I was born in 1492. How old does that make me? So I guess he improved their math skills trying to, to figure that one out. Um, <clears throat> he, would, uh, he was a giving person, and Tiffany and Chris shared this with us, with me, that when they were in college, not married yet, he had a sales area that he traveled, and it was close to them down. It stretched to Alabama. It was a very big, the whole southeastern area. But he would go a little bit out of his sales area just to come and take them to supper. And it was a restaurant. They always went to a very nice place, the Cypress Inn. What river was it on, Chris? I couldn't read my own handwriting. The Black Warrior River. And uh, it was a wonderful restaurant. He was very generous. That meant a lot to any college kid, you know, to go and eat a nice meal. But it became so special to them that Chris proposed to Tiffany at that very restaurant. So uh, he kind of laid the groundwork for a, a very special union there. Um, and so uh, he also liked to save letters from his kids and all kinds of letters from people. He was the godfather to uh, Chris and Tiffany's grandkids, maybe some others too, I don't know, but, but at least to those. Um, and Tiffany shared some stories that the, the grandkids, her children, would come down here to visit with Bill and Ann in the summer. And they always came back with fun stories, you know, and just stories about Bill and things that he would do. One time one of them was upset and said, I'm going to walk home. And Bill just had a way of coercing and loving them to kind of come back and be calm and everything would be okay. Uh, one time they went to Sam's and bought, he bought three of those massive Sam's pies. And, and uh, somehow he got by with that because the grandkids were in town, right, Ann? And uh, Ann tried, I understand Ann tried to help him be more healthy and, um, and didn't have a lot of success, maybe some along the way. But uh, he brought home those three big pies. Um, he said that he and Ann, and I, I kind of like this one myself, they had a goal, maybe another bucket list, to eat at every Cracker Barrel in the United States of America. So uh, what was his favorite dish? Was it meatloaf, I think? And he liked that at the Cracker Barrel, too. So uh, he, he loved that. He also loved sweets. He could cook anything breakfast. So uh, if you want a breakfast, he was the go-to guy to get your breakfast. Um, he went to... Um, to the sports events for the kids. He, soccer, travel, he uh, loved to be there. It just showed his dependability. If he said he was going to do it, he was all in and he would do it. He was the president of the Optimist Club. So was his glass half full or half empty? What do y'all think? Half full, right? So he was a, an optimist and he always encouraged people. And if someone was not on the right path, he would let them know it was going to be okay. He would re redirect them. He'd let them know it's going to work out. And he was a positive person. Um, and thinking about that, now he and Ann, if we talked about politics, he and Ann didn't really talk about politics much. So they were a little different and uh, they had different ideas on politics. Uh, so they set that one aside. But Ann said this, that he always cons was considerate of her mood. Boy, I, I have a lot to learn. That sounds like a nice guy, you know. And she said that they had differences, like any couple, of course. But he had a way of being considerate and patient. And he always brought a sense of calm to any situation. So he is very even-tempered. And that brings us to the top passage on here, a wonderful passage of Philippians 4, 6, and 9. So Bill's life preaches this passage. Do not be anxious about anything. But in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, Think about these things, what you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, the Apostle Paul said, practice these things and the God of peace will be with you. So he knew the value of filling his mind with good thoughts, even positive and true thoughts as well, and helping others to do the same thing. You know, regarding Bill's faith in Jesus, he might say with the Apostle Paul in 2 Timothy, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me on that day. And not to me only, but also unto all them 
that love his appearing. Regarding his health today, Bill might say with King David, you turned my wailing into dancing. You removed my sackcloth and clothed me with joy that my heart may sing to you and not be silent. O Lord, my God, I will give you thanks forever. Aren't y'all glad that Bill had faith in Jesus? And if we ponder faith for a minute, his faith was not just any faith. It's not just that general faith. You know, you see uh, on the side of a building in New York, it might say believe, you know, and the Macy's Day Pray. Now, that's okay. That's optimist, right? That's good thinking. That's positive. But faith in a Christian faith goes a little deeper. He had a specific faith in the person and the work of Jesus Christ, the work being the cross and uh, the resurrection. And so his faith was in Christ. I I repeat this over and over at funerals because it just speaks to me and I hope it speaks to others. In Hebrews 11, 6, without faith, it's impossible to please God because everyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. And I love this. When it says without faith, it's impossible to please God. Don't let that discourage you because what that's saying is with faith, it is possible to please God. As a matter of fact, the thing that does please God is faith. The only thing that we can bring God initially is our faith. And a faith is not the super virtue for the super saint. It's not, you know, we speak, oh, that person has such a great faith. Well, we can grow in our faith as believers. But when you're first coming to Christ, faith has a built-in confession. Faith is a welcome mat. Because faith tells us, you know, if I say I want to be a Christian, if I want to be a believer, if I want to be a child of God, what I'm really saying, or if I have, a, you know, I'm saying I have a hurt uh, I cannot heal. I have a sin I can't forgive. I have a need I can't meet. And so when we come to Christ, Jesus says, let me heal that hurt. Let me forgive that sin. Let me meet that need. So when we come to Jesus in faith, we confess some truth and we yield our weakness, our sin to Jesus. And part what we bring to God is our failure, our sin, our hurt. And we give him our faith. I trust in you. And he does the rest. He gives us our salvation because of what he has done in Christ Jesus. Um, There's a character in the Bible attached to faith. It's Enoch. And uh, Enoch and Elijah, the only two people in all the Bible that did not uh, go through death. Uh, Enoch was walking with God. That was the, the characterization of his life. And God just took him to heaven. And that's kind of odd, isn't it? But God did something unique. Elijah, we might see in a few minutes, he uh, was taken up to heaven in a chariot of fire and a whirlwind. I believe God gives us both of those pictures uh, so that we'll know about the rapture to come or the resurrection to come because there's going to be a day when that's going to happen. You know, we're not supposed to fear the grave. Uh, Contemporary uh, entertainment would make the grave scary, wouldn't it? But the grave's not scary. It's natural. It's something we pass through. Everyone, even Jesus, the Lord, died and passed through the grave, except for those two guys, Enoch and Elijah, who were a special teaching point, something that God wanted to do. And so the Bible says, Apostle Paul says, a seed falls in the ground. It breaks open, or literally, he says it dies so that a plant can have life and grow. And he says that each of us who are in Christ Jesus, unless the rapture comes, I'll tell you about that, but unless the rapture comes, unless Christ returns first, each of us passes. Our old body wears out and it dies, and our, our spirit goes immediately into the presence of Jesus. We close our eyes in this life and open them in the presence of Jesus. You all know the scripture that says to be uh, uh, absent from the body is to be what? present with the Lord. Y'all know that. And so uh, when when our spirit passes, we go right into the presence of Jesus. The body is placed in the ground, but it's looking forward. The Bible says all of creation, including us, groan waiting for God to complete what our salvation brings. So there's a day when a trumpet's going to blast. There's going to be the sound of the archangel shouting, 
and the Lord Jesus will come to the edge of the sky. The bodies of those who are saved but have already died and been buried will come up out of the grave. And then uh, those of us who are still living, who are believers, will be called up to the air to meet the Lord in the sky. And I can't explain this, but the Bible basically is saying in 1 Corinthians, the spirit of us that's in the presence of Jesus will be rejoined with that old corrupt and dead body. And you know what's going to happen? It will be glorified. The Bible says in a moment, in a twinkling of the eye, we shall all be changed just like that. And so the Spirit's going to bring that about. And uh, when, we, when we trust Jesus, we are free forever from the penalty of sin. The Spirit comes in and gives us life immediately. We have a new character, a new mindset. We never go to hell. We have a place reserved for heaven. We have a position in his righteousness and holiness. As we walk with the Lord, we adjust our thinking. We adjust our thinking to God's truth. That's called being sanctified. We're learning how to live in the holiness that God already gives us. Most religions are performance-based. If I can do the right thing and live the right way, maybe God will accept me. But what the, the Bible teaches is that Jesus died for us. He did the whole work. And so his Holy Spirit at salvation comes in us. He places his holiness on us. And we learn how to live out that holiness each day, overcoming every day the power of sin in our life. And here's the last thought. Uh, one day when Christ comes again, as I described, we'll be free forever from the presence of sin in the presence of, of the Lord Jesus Christ. So we have a wonderful salvation and we have a lot to look forward in Christ Jesus. Do you know anyone can come to Jesus? And uh, God makes it simple. In the book of John, he tells us this, after sharing seven of Jesus' miracles, only seven out of all that he did, he says, these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. If you ever doubt God, if you ever are curious about salvation, you can always go to the book of John. Those seven miracles are there to encourage our faith. And, um, you know, and that also brings us to John 14, which is a wonderful passage, uh, a wonderful passage of hope. And you guys know it well, but I'm going to say it anyway. The night before Jesus died, he was with his disciples and he said to them, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. Uh, for my, um, yes, and my, thank you, go ahead. In my Father's house are many mansions or many rooms. If it were not so, I would tell you, I'm going to prepare a place for you. If I go to prepare a place for you, I'm coming back to take you to be with me so you can be where I am. So we think about the place, heaven, wonderful, incredible, pearly gates, streets of gold, all of those wonderful visions, angels' wings, harps, all of those things we see in the scripture and yet it's so much more. There's a new heaven and a new earth, God tells us. And we can think about it this way. If we think about this creation, if we think about this earth, God created it in six days. I have to say that for, uh, for Bill. The earth, we read that verse. This whole creation was created in six days. God said, let there be, and it was. He created it by speaking. And you know the beauty of this place, the creation, the earth, the skies, the people, the oceans. Y'all have traveled. You've seen Haiti. You've seen Destin. You've seen all these wonderful places. But you know what? Uh, Jesus said to his disciples that night, I'm going to prepare a place for you. So this is, is a, a corrupt place. It's beautiful, but it's tainted. Jesus, over 2,000 years ago, told his disciples, I'm going to prepare a place for you. He created this in six days. Uh, perhaps he's been working on the new heaven and earth for over 2,000 years. He doesn't need 2,000 years, does he? But don't you wonder what he might do in 2,000 years? And uh, the best part of it is not the place. We could focus all day and wonder, hey, we could say, what do we get when we're a Christian? Well, I get, uh, so I get forgiveness of sins. I get uh, the church. I get the fruit of the Spirit, the gifts of the Spirit. I get the power of God. I get the presence and the work of the Holy Spirit. We could go on and on, and a lot of those things are the French benefits because the most important thing we receive when we're believers in Christ is Jesus. And if we want to go to heaven, the way to acclimate or prepare ourselves for heaven is to know Jesus because Jesus, our heaven, is is all about jesus anybody can come to heaven and you all know this but i'll, I'll share uh, and also for those on facebook anybody can come to heaven i like to think think of three questions who what and how who is jesus he's god what did he do he died for my sins 
He was buried and he rose again. How can I be saved or how can I know Jesus? The Bible says repentance toward God. Remember, changing our thinking to think the way God does in the scriptures. And faith in the Lord Jesus. That means believe. I believe who you are, Jesus. You're God. I believe what you did, Jesus. You died on the cross. You were buried and you rose again. And now, Lord, I give my life to you. I believe in you in such a way. Would you let the, here's what it is to be saved. Letting the living, resurrected spirit of Christ come to live in my dead spirit forever and to make me a new creation and to give me life. It's that simple. We can say it a lot of ways, but if I said, Lord, would you forgive my sin and save me? I believe who you are. I believe what you did. Would you let your spirit come into my spirit and save me? And the Bible says, whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Well, um, I want to encourage you with a, another passage or two as we go, and we're almost finished. But I just want to say this to encourage anybody who was blessed, who was encouraged. You know, Bill may have been a rock for some people. He may have been, uh, I, I love in the Bible, I mentioned the prophet Elijah. And when Elijah was getting close to that time of being taken up, uh, he had a, a disciple, someone he was mentoring named Elisha and uh, two prophets. And they were walking one day and they knew it was the day that Elijah would be taking up. Why do they know that? Well, they were prophets, so they knew that. But uh, they were uh, coming to the Jordan River and Elijah took off his mantle or his cloak. That was the symbol of his role as a prophet. And he rolled it up and he came over to the river and he struck the water and the water parted to the right and to the left. The Bible says that they both walked across the river on dry ground. And they were there for a while and talked. And Elijah said, what can I do for you? Elisha said, would it be possible for me to have twice the spirit that you have? Now, could you imagine? Think of what Bill has accomplished in his life. Maybe he's somebody else's Elijah. Maybe he's your leader. You know, what if you said, can I fix twice as many things as Bill? You know, mm -hmm. can I share the gospel with twice as many people? Could I have twice the gifts to, to love people and to help people and encourage? Could I have twice? You know, that's kind of what Elijah, Elisha was saying. Uh, could I perform twice as many miracles? Could I see twice as much power as what you had? And Elijah said, if you see me when God takes me up, you have it. And so uh, they were standing, they were talking, and then walking along. And all of a sudden, there was a whirlwind. And all of a sudden, there was a chariot of fire, and Elijah was taken up. And, and Elisha was so moved that he screamed, My father, my father, the chariots and the horsemen thereof. And he was taken up into heaven. And things got quiet, and the dust settled down. And Elisha looks down at his feet and sees that cloak, that mantle. And he picks it up, and without thinking twice, he walks over to that river, wraps it up like Elijah. Remember, he asked for a double portion. He comes up, and he strikes the water. He said, where now is the God of Elijah? And guess what? The water parts to one side and the other. The Bible says that Elijah walks across on dry ground. And the question that it gives to us that we might ask, when we lose, I've lo I lost one of my Elijahs years ago, my dad. And um, I actually shared that same thought with my four brothers. Because you come to that place, and maybe the question that God asks is, where is the man or woman of God who will pick up the mantle and strike the river and go on in the spirit of Elijah? And uh, that's my encouragement to family members, to anyone who's listening, to those who come behind. Sometimes we learn something from a family member, from a dad, from an uncle, a grandfather. Uh, we learn things from those that, that we love and are around us. What a blessing to have someone like that in our life. And I'm glad that you guys had the years together that you did. And to the family and children and grandchildren that you had the time. Ken, thank you for your heart sharing uh, just the, the closeness of friends. And there's other friends here uh, today. But God wants to bless us. Don't lose a step. There's a time and a season for grieving, and it takes time. There's times you're going to miss him, and I know it's an adjustment. And, uh, but the Spirit of God will give us comfort, and he'll love us. Matter of fact, I think I'll finish on that note. Just 
Isaiah 40 is a wonderful passage, and it begins uh, with God comforting Israel. And he's speaking of the Messiah to come. Comfort ye, comfort my people. We sing about that in the Messiah. And then, uh, and then uh, at the end of that passage is a, a wonderful thought that we memorize. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. But we sometimes miss a little passage right in the middle, verse 11. And it's a passage where God is described as a shepherd. And he, he, uh, Isaiah speaks of him as a shepherd. And I'm going to read that little verse to us. He says, he tends his flock like a shepherd. He gathers the lambs in his arms and carries them close to his heart. He gently leads those that have young. Now, nobody in this room thinks of Bill as a little lamb, do they? You know, Bill's, Bill uh, had a lot of other strengths and a man of stability and peace and all those things we've described. But he was God's lamb, and God has gathered him up. But that passage is for us, too, and for each of us, for Anne, for children, for grandchildren and friends. God wants to gather us close to his heart, and we have the confidence that he'll gently lead us through a time of grieving through this time he's the god of all comfort and he wants us to be comforted by his holy spirit let's uh let's bow our heads and we'll pray and then after that chris is going to come and uh, he's going to lead us in some family introductions for those on facebook so heavenly father we're thankful that we can call on the name of the lord god you're a holy god you created adam and eve as holy beings but sin came into their lives and it affected all mankind and Lord Jesus, there was a need for some help. How could unholy man have relationship with the holy God? God himself came as Jesus Christ, born of a virgin Mary, lived a perfect, sinful life, the first perfect and holy man since Adam and Eve. And Lord, you died on the cross for our sins. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that you bore the sin and guilt and shame of all people on the cross for all time, a one-time act that you committed on our behalf and lord jesus we say thank you and as bill loved the resurrection that's everything to us thank you that jesus rose again overcoming death and that makes you the first fruit you're the confidence you're the hope the fact that jesus rose again we have all the promises of god that now come true to us and bill is experiencing some of those promises right now and there are still more to come and so, Lord Jesus, we thank you for Jesus. Thank you for his salvation. And, Lord, we yield to you. And if anyone doesn't know Jesus as Lord, let the Holy Spirit lead them to a saving relationship with you. And we call on you to do that. Thank you that you made it possible for sinful people to come into a holy relationship with the Holy God. And, Lord, you tell us now as we live our lives, our conduct, you're teaching us to let our conduct catch up with our character and position. You tell us, be holy, for I am holy. Lord, help us to walk in your holiness. We call in your name. Would you circle around this family today? Put your loving arms around them. Let them know the comfort and love every day and all that you have to offer. I pray that this family would not miss one blessing. And that there would even be some that pick up the mantle and take up where Bill left off. That could be someone in this room. That could be someone that's watching. And would you bless this family in Jesus' name. Amen. Chris, why don't you come on up now? And uh, Chris is going to share with those who are on Facebook. Okay, hello. Um, for those of you that don't know, I'm Chris, Bill's son, here with my wife, and uh, just want to thank everyone for tuning in. I'm here representing the Purdy family, uh, Bill's sister and brother, Jason and Lisa, um, my brother and sister, Don, David, and Kelly, and also six grandchildren. So on behalf of all of us, thank you all for coming.